Thank you. You too. Welcome to you too. <laughs> so these fabulous people are quintessential wins, and you're gonna hear some great music from them and a great tale called the Bremontown Musicians. So I'll let you guys pick up. <laughs> I hope that introduction is okay. Well, what we I thought we would do first um, is demonstrate our instruments for what they sound like so that when you hear them in the music you say, oh wow, that's the flute, oh that's the bassoon, or that's the horn, or the best one, the clarinet, or the second best one, the oboe. Well, of course, you know, that depends on your opinion. But So uh, what we're going to do very briefly, I'm going to play a little bit of the clarinet so you know what, when you hear it, say, oh, that's the clarinet. <laughs> Lowest note is, highest note is, so it has I had a great range um, and it's a very useful instrument because it played in Dixieland, the jazz band, and orchestra, and small groups like this. Hi guys, my name is Miss Rachel and I play the flute. Uh, the regular flute, and I have its little sister or brother, whatever you call it, it's a piccolo. And um, how many of you have ever blown across a bottle no. before? Like maybe made a noise? Have oh. you ever done that before? Not me. No, yeah. So basically, it's the same thing. You just blow right into it like this. to the clarinet, made out of wood, but uh, it sounds quite different because of the reed that uh, is on the instrument. <coughs> That's the lowest note, and the highest note is... <coughs> so, not quite as large a range as the clarinet, but... Uh, you ever hear the snake charmer? With the snake coming up, <coughs> that's an oval. There's one in that. My name is Steve. This is the French horn, also known as the horn. <coughs> Sounds like this. <coughs> even taller than I am. And I'm a big, big giant, six foot seven. This is called the bassoon. It's a double reed like the elbow. It's my little brother over there. No, it's and littler than you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand. The bassoon is, sounds... <coughs> Soon, it's the only instrument that uses all the fingers, both of the thumbs I use. So, I hope you enjoy everything. One more. No, introduce the uh, gut instrument. This one. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, this is what we call a tuning fork, and it vibrates. If you have it close to your ear, after knocking on something to make it vibrate, you can hear it, and it gives an A sound for us to tune. And so I'll sit down and play an A uh, straight from the tuning fork, and we can tune the group and we'll play. And we will play something called The Entertainer. It was written by Scott Joplin at uh, the turn of the 20th century in the 1900s. And that's just so you kind of, before we get into the narrations, you kind of hear, okay, this is what the group sounds like, and oh, I recognize the bassoon and the oboe and the clarinet. somebody who's going to tell a story and <coughs> play music in the background. So this is kind of a combination of <coughs> literature, <coughs> literature and music and the way she does it, theater. So I hope you enjoy. The first story is called The Unhappy Aardvark and it's about an animal who has a hard time figuring out where dinner is coming. <coughs> Unhappy Aardvark by Paul Harris. There once was a very unhappy Aardvark. <laughs> Thank you. 
choice anthill, admiring his busy little friends and thinking, what am I going to eat? <laughs>
story of the unhappy art <laughs> The next story we're going to tell you and play music to is called The Random Town Musicians. And it's a story about four travelers who join up together and try to find a new life someplace else because things weren't going that well from the places they were leaving. So um, there are a couple of recurring themes in this that we thought we'd play so that you would know, oh yeah, I, that's supposed to, I'll hear that again in here. So the first one is what we call the traveling theme, and that's when uh, they all end up sort of traveling together a little bit. I gotta get the right. So 260 now. Yeah, not the traveling theme. <laughs> you the idea of somebody who is in a hurry to get away from where they are in a hurry to get where they're going. So we call this the running thing. And you're going to see who's running away when you listen to the story. <laughs> by Catherine Sutton and Ruth Friedman, music by Gary Friedman. <clears throat> Once there was a donkey, and his owner was pleased because he had been working for many long years carrying sacks to the mill, untiring. <laughs> My master. 
master wanted to kill me, so I ran off. <laughs> But now, how should I earn my keep? You know what? said the donkey. I'm going to Bremen to become a town musician. Why don't you come along and we can become musicians there together? I'll play the horn and you can play the clarinet. <laughs> and my teeth are dull, and I'd rather lie behind the stove and purr than run around to chase after mice, so my mistress wanted to drown me. and told the cook that she wants to eat me tomorrow as chicken soup. <coughs> so since I'm supposed to let them cut off my head this evening, I'm going to cry as loud as I can at the top of my voice as long as I can. Now, 
Mr. Rooster, said the donkey. Come away with us instead. We're going to Bremen. It's easier to find something better than death. You have a good voice, and it will sound very good when we make music together. <laughs> took to the branches. The rooster flew right up to the top where it was safest for him. But before falling asleep, he looked around one last time in all four directions. And there, caught sight of a little spark burning in the distance. He hollered down to his companions that there must be a house not too far away, because he could see a light shining. Let's go there, because the lodging here is not too comfortable. The dog remarked that he'd do anything for a few bones with a little meat on them. So they set off in the direction of the little light, and as they approached, it glistened more brightly, and became larger and larger until they came to a brightly lit house full of robbers. Thinking 
that a ghost must be after them and fled terrified into the woods. <laughs> and all the good food and drink the robbers had left behind. They put up the boat and looked for a place to sleep, each according to his nature and his desire. The donkey lay down outside under a manure pile, on a manure pile. The dog settled himself behind the door. The cat curled up on the hearth next to the worn ashes, and the rooster perched on a roof beam. And because they were exhausted from their long journey, they soon fell fast asleep. In the early hours of the morning, when the robbers saw from a distance that the light was no longer burning in the house and that everything was quiet, the captain said, we shouldn't have let ourselves be scared off like that. He ordered one. He ordered one of them to go back and investigate the house. and held a sulfur match next to them to make a flame. The cat didn't think this was at all funny and jumped into his face, spitting and scratching. <laughs> Ow! Terrified, he ran toward the back door with a jog, jumped up and bit him in the leg. <laughs> Ow! And when he ran across the yard past the manure pile, the donkey gave him a healthy blow with his hind foot. Ow! And the rooster, who had been awakened by all the noise, cried down from his bream, Bring the rascal here! Cock-a-doodle-doo! <laughs> the robber raced back to his captain and the safety of the forest as fast as he could go. And he said, oh, you won't believe what I just went through. There was a horrible witch in there, and she blew on me and scratched her face with my, my face with her terrible long nails. Then a man by the door stabbed me in the leg with a knife. <laughs> Then a black monster lying in the yard struck me with a wooden club. <laughs> then to top it all, there was a judge sitting up there on the roof, and he was calling out, Bring the rascal here! So I ran for my life. From that time on, the robbers never dared to go back to the house. But the four Bremen musicians settled in and made it their home. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
either about the instruments, about uh, uh, any of it. Yes, sweetie. Um, I was going to use that ow, ow, ow. Oh, <laughs> that was one of my favorite parts, too, actually. You did right. a good job with that. Ow! Yeah, you got it. If I'd known, I would have called on you when it was done. That would have been fun. Anybody else? You know, you any questions know. about the instruments? Did you have a question? You were asking me something, but I didn't... I didn't here, I couldn't hear ah. I was doing that. What was your question? Right at the end, do you have a question? Um, I think. Um, um, I might forgot. It's okay if you forgot. <laughs> no, I just right. thought you were right. asking me when I was... Um, so, who's going to play what? Who's going to play flute when they get a little older? Okay. Nobody? Oh, no tankers? Really? <laughs> oh, my goodness. French horn. Or horn. Me. All right. Yeah, okay. Me too. Yeah. Clarinet. Me too. Yeah. Oh, are you going to play horn too, or are you going to play them both? Oh, there you go. Bassoon. Bassoon. Yeah. Oboe. Yeah, oboe. Yeah, oboe. They're all fun. It took a little work, but they're all a lot of fun to play. So we're going to play. Um, the last selection needs a little help from you, from the audience. Can you go, shh, 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 Okay, so you keep doing that, and we're going to play um, a piece by Henry Mancini. Uh, they did a re-broadcast or a re-taping or whatever of uh, the Pink Panther. The movie The Pink Panther with, who was the, I can't remember what it was now, but um, anyway, we're going to play the theme from The Pink Panther, and we need you to go, ready? Keep going. Louder. Can you do it? Louder.
Thank you. Thank you. We're a wonderful audience. Thank you very much. And uh, hope we come back and play for you again sometime. Thank you for coming. Thank you.